Hello everyone and welcome back to Humble Heart Horsemanship. My name is Sabrina and today I am not at the typical barn that you usually see me at or my house. I'm at my friend Savannah's barn and this is the location where I evacuated both Gunner and Gemini on Memorial Day too. So they've been staying here since and planning on moving them back pretty soon. But this video is just gonna be kind of like a quick little update on what's going on. Today is September 28th. And basically about a week ago, I noticed that Gemini had green mucus draining from both of his nostrils. And other than that, he was eating and drinking fine. He wasn't dehydrated. His poop looked normal, all that kind of stuff. But he had this mucus that was kind of clear and also kind of had some green color in it, which is never good. With horses, if it's clear, it's a good sign, but if it has color in it, like yellow or green, it's not so good. Um, and then it kind of progressed where it got to this like dark white kind of phlegmy light green color, if that makes sense. I will post a picture of what it looks like here. If it grosses you out, be sure to not watch this part for the next few seconds. But basically that's what was coming out of his nose. So it made me nervous, so I called the vet, and a vet tech answered, and she asked me all the basic questions and told me that it could be because of all the smoke exposure that the horses got, because the air quality was awful. So of course, I haven't been riding both of the boys, um, and I don't plan to for uh, likely another week or two. Um, so it could just be like from the smoke, and it could also be like a sinus infection too. So. Um, that same day when I called the vet tech, she told me she would have the vet call, and the vet wasn't able to call that day, but when she did relay her the information, she said that I should have the vet come out to look at Gemini. So the soonest appointment they had available was Monday, which is today. So the vet's going to be here in about, well, let's see, they're going to be here in about 45 minutes, and um, hopefully nothing is seriously wrong with him. I don't think it is. He might just have like a sinus infection. So we want to kind of kick that in the butt, you know, as soon as we can. And uh, also I noticed that his hind legs were swollen. But that could be because about two days ago I decided to stable him in this little tiny stall here. And he's never really been like in a stall consistently uh, because at home he has a stall with a run so he can move around. So he could just have swelling of his back legs because he was stabled overnight and he's not really used to that and he needs space to walk around. But uh, that's kind of what's happening right now for the little update. And I'm in here cleaning his stall right now. So yeah, that's what I'm up to. But anyways, there's also these super duper cute little, hello, there's sheep and goats over here. And they're very, very cute. They've been talking to me while I've been cleaning this stall. <laughs> But anyways, fingers crossed it's not something too serious with my poor baby Gemini. So uh, I'll keep you updated. Also, today's energy is sponsored by Pumpkin Spice Cold Brew from Starbucks. This is really good. If you've never tried it, definitely give it a try if you like pumpkin. Because this is getting me through this day. I worked in the morning and now I'm here at the barn working more. So this is an overview of my friend's barn. It's a really pretty property. Those are her horses over there. It's a really nice big open space. And then we have Gunner on the left and Gemini on the right over there. Gunner's been out here full time because I didn't want to keep him in a stall because of his ring bone. He gets really painful and ouchy in his hooves and his legs if he, you know, is cooped up in a stall so he needs to move around. And then Gemini has been hanging out in a stall for the past two days and getting some turnout time for a few hours just because I don't know what's really going on with him until the vet comes. And so yeah, this is where they've been staying at during this whole crazy evacuation from the wildfires and the forest fires, I guess I should say. So yeah, they've been staying. Initially, she didn't even have any of these paddocks for them to stay in. So all the horses were just basically roaming this whole property together and stuff. Let's see how Mr. Gunner's doing. Hey Gunny. Hi Bubba's. 
What are you doing? You want to say hi to the people? Yeah, it's kind of hard to see his cute face because he's wearing the fly mask, but he's under there, I promise. And then Gemini's over there. Okay. Also, a tip for those of you who like to use fly masks on your horses, make sure that you are taking the fly mask off at least once a day and inspecting your horse's face to make sure that there's not any cuts or any rubbing happening underneath of the fly mask. And I'm gonna take gunners off here. It also helps their face breathe a little bit so they can relax. Hey, I gotta get this off of you, buddy. Oh, there's a gunny. There's a pretty boy face. He's so funny because he likes to always investigate what I'm doing. And hey, you don't want to eat out of deer. That's yucky. Gunny. Anyways, he always likes to investigate what I'm doing. And yesterday I had a bucket, just a little red bucket full of grooming supplies. And he loves to knock things over. So he put his nose in there and picked up a brush and just dropped it on the floor. <laughs> and then he was trying to knock over the bucket and it was just cracking me up because he loves to knock things over. Like if he's in a cross tie and there's like shampoo bottles or anything, he's like, ooh, can I knock it over? That looks kind of fun. <laughs> okay, Gunny, let, let's not eat out of there. <coughs> mm, buddy, I'm sorry, my love. Oh, goodness. He's been kind of coughing like that, probably from the smoke exposure. Poor boy, you okay? Yeah, you're doing okay. It'll take a while for those lungs to heal, Bubba's. Oh, this donkey is the cutest thing ever. His name is Salvador, and he's precious. Hello. I actually haven't been up close to a donkey since I was probably like a kid in a petting zoo, but he's very sweet. Hello. Look at those big ears. You are so cute. You're gonna let me give you some lovin's. Hello. Hello. You're cute. Over here with Gemini now. I just halted him and I'm gonna bring him in to the barn for the vet appointment. You sweet boy. Look at this face. Oh, you gonna hug mama? See, he's been drinking, which is good. He's drinking water, and when I came in here, he was eating some of his hay, kind of munching on it, so those are good signs, but I don't know what's going on, buddy. What's going on, Jemmy? Oh, he's a good boy. The thing that's been really good about this whole crazy situation that started off being really traumatic and now I'm starting to see a lot of the benefits to it is that Gemini is definitely being exposed to a lot of different stimuli like sheep and goats and donkeys and kids and other horses and it's like a desensitization experience for him because he's getting used to seeing a lot of different things that he would have probably not seen for a long while if I had just had him at the barn for however long I plan to keep him there. So, you know, it's it's good. He's getting exposed to a lot of stuff as a three-year-old that he needs to be exposed to. So, yeah, it's good. I'm, I'm happy about it. Good boy. Ah. Hmm. 
Oh, buddy boy. Okay, so four and a half hours later, I'm gonna tell you how that vet appointment went for Gemini. First things first, Gemini was such a good boy. They kept commenting on how nicely he was acting during the whole appointment for being three. He was really, really sweet and he was just so nice to handle. Um, when she first came, they listened to his lungs and they did a breathing test, which um, basically she explained to me that when we go into the doctor's office, when they have you breathe in and breathe out and the doctor listens with a stethoscope, they can obviously listen to your lungs. But with horses, you can't tell them to breathe in and breathe out. So you have to essentially make them breathe in and breathe out. So they did this breath test where they basically put a plastic bag over his nose and um, that would force him to take a deep breath in and breathe out once we took the bag off and she was able to listen to his lungs and she said that she didn't um, hear anything that would indicate that he has liquid in his lungs um, or that there was any crackling sounds. It sounded a little bit irritated. She said it was good that he had mucus draining from both of his nostrils too and his hind legs were definitely swollen and she was amazed at how swollen they were um, and she thought just like I thought that his legs had stocked up because he's not used to being in a stall all the time he's used to having space to walk around in and some horses just get stocked up when they're kept in a stall for you know a longer duration of time than usual so that was what happened there um, she's like wow those are really like swollen I'm like I know so she recommended cold hosing and putting um, standing wraps on his legs. And uh, then she took his temperature and his temperature was 103.7 degrees Fahrenheit. Which if you know anything about horses, that's a very, very high fever. She said that she recommends people to call the vet when it reaches 102.5. So his fever was very, very high. So. She decided to give him an IV dose of banamine to help with his fever. And she also prescribed nine um, dissolvable antibiotic tablets to give him two times a day, and then to give him um, orally the banamine paste um, every 24 hours after I temp him to see if he still has a fever. Um, so the thing that threw us both off was that most horses who have a fever don't want to eat or really drink. But he was eating and drinking and pooping fine, which is very strange. And we're kind of making jokes. I'm like, well, he's a foodie. Like, you know, it's probably what's happening. Because um, he was still eating. It's funny because as she said that, Gemini reached down and he just took a bite of hay. And I'm like, this boy, you know, he's just a little bit funny. Uh, so, yeah, um, it was just, yeah, it was kind of crazy. Um he acted really really well for the vet and she was really impressed she kept calling him she's like are you little baby horse superstar and um he was really sweet he just loves people and he's such a good three-year-old he doesn't act like a three-year-old so she gave me all the instructions and um uh, after she left she told me that if his uh, if he doesn't improve in three to five days definitely call her out and she'll come out again and they can um, do a nose swab test and also um, some blood work to rule out any other like viruses or other illnesses too but i think he'll be okay but um it's just like emotionally this whole month of september has it's really been a lot for me and i i came home but it was this hard i i um gave him a dose of the antibiotics and he was really good for it when I put the paste in his mouth, I had this is like my first time like deworming him or giving him anything orally, and he did what a lot of horses did. It was really funny. I put it in his mouth, and I always like to hold up their head a little bit to make sure that they swallow the medicine before you allow them to put their head down. And I was holding his head up, and I'm like, he's not swallowing. And I kind of waited, and I kind of scratched him. I'm like, okay, Gemini, you need to swallow the medicine. So I slowly put his head down, and the medicine starts like coming out of his mouth. I'm like. He's a smart one. He holds it in his mouth until I put his head down and then he tried to spit it out. So I like had to hold his head up for the other little half of the dose because I couldn't fit it all in the plastic syringe and it was funny, but he got like, I would say 75% of the medicine. So that happened. Um, and then I cold hosed his hind legs to see if that would help and put him back in his stall and 
of course gave him kisses and told him that mama loves him because he's my baby boy but um it's just uh, this month has been a lot so I came home had a good cry um and now I'm gonna go take a shower but uh yeah so I'm gonna check on him tomorrow to, um, check his temperature and I'll be at the barn um two times a day for the next week making sure he's good giving him his medication and uh yeah, so that's basically what happened there. And really grateful for the vet and the vet tech because they handled everything so nicely and they answered a lot of my questions. Like, I had so many questions. All right, so today is the 29th. Just got to the barn and I tempted Gemini and his fever is at 102.7, which is an improvement from yesterday. I also gave him his second oral dose of the antibiotics and I walked him for five minutes as the vet requested for his stocking up and also cold hose his legs for 10 minutes. And then I cleaned his stall and he's still eating and drinking like normal so that's a good sign. And he looks alert. He's got a little bit of some mucus coming out of his nose still but not a lot. And then later tonight I'm going to give him his um, second dose of banamine. Um, and then he also gets another dose of his antibiotics. So. We have a little bit of some improvement and his hind legs with the stocking up has definitely improved because they're not as swollen as they were yesterday. They're so cute. Every time I come over to check on him, he always has to come say hi. Hello. Hello, handsome boy. Hello. Are you just finishing your breakfast? Oh, it's so good. He's drinking water. What a good boy. Good boy, Jamie. It's got to be a trick to getting him to put his head up. Yeah, that's Ask her. No, I'm fine. I already know what I'm doing. I'm, I'm, doing, I'm doing it the best I can. I didn't say you weren't doing it. Uh, <laughs> where's your best thing, Alana? You guys got to be. Are you ready? <laughs> I'm ready. Are you ready, Jimmy? Okay. This time, don't spit it out. I know. I don't care. You got to swallow it, buddy. Maybe that one tastes better than the other one. <laughs> He's used to it now. You guys it. No, I think you swallowed it. Yeah, he did. Okay. <laughs> he like a baby. First one, not so much. Okay, but... are you ready? Good boy! Good boy. His little lips are all frothy. Good boy! Good boy. Even if some gets on the floor, you just have to say, like, whatever. And also, if you look at his nose, Ma. He doesn't have any green mucus coming out. So that means the antibiotics are at least working. Oh, He's that's eating, great. which is a good sign too. That's great. <laughs> really cute, Ma. Really cute. Oh, he likes that petting, Ma. Does he? Yeah. So today is October 1st, and I drove out here to the Colton barn where the boys uh, are typically living. This is the barn that we evacuated them from like three or so weeks ago and I came back here to drop off all of my tack and all of my horse supplies. That way it's off my back patio where it's been stored for a while now. Um, but basically I came into the tack room here and it definitely still smells like a lot of smoke. But I went in here and I swept down some cobwebs up there. I got a little bit cleaner swept the floor and then I put all my stuff back. So those are my saddle pads up there. We got a bridle, another bridle underneath, and then my saddle. So it's looking a lot more organized, but the barn is really, really empty. Like there's still not that many people here. Um, I think that they also lost some borders too after the evacuations, um, which is kind of sad because there's not like the normal amount of horses here it's kind of quiet but anyways that's what I'm up to and then I will go back and show you um, the boys's pasture where they're gonna be staying at um, basically I was on a waiting list to get a really nice big pasture for a while now and I got this huge pasture with a shelter that both Gemini and Gunner get to live in and so I'll show you that in just a second too so here's walking into the entrance gate to the pasture and then to the right if you go up here 
we have the big red shelter and this will be great for those rainy kind of snowy wet days when the boys want to have a little place to get away and go to some shelter so see they got a lot of space right in there which will be nice for them and then over here this is where the big part is and it goes all the way like way back towards there is where the fence is but yeah this is a lot of space like this is more than enough space for these boys so they're gonna be super happy out here and then as you walk down here this is where the gate is that you can choose to leave open or close so they have access but yeah it's gonna be awesome for them this is like what I want for my boys. I want them to be horses and to have a lot of space to roam in, you know? That's how horses are meant to live. So yeah, I'm really excited for when I get to bring the boys back here so they can enjoy all this huge space. Like, look at this. They're going to be so happy, but first they need to feel better. So that way it's safe to trailer them back here. So that's what we're working on right now. But then after this, they get to enjoy all this. I will never ever be able to drive by this tree without remembering that those huge branches were on the ground and those are the ones that we had to move in order to get up the drive to go rescue the boys on that crazy night. You good boy, you standing like a good boy. Oh, you just got a bath. Are you all clean? Got a quick little bath. You look a lot cleaner now, buddy. What a good boy. Oh, Jemmy got bath too. Jemmy got bath too. Are you all shiny?